Hello and welcome to Straight Talk. I'm Aisha Subarkaj. It's a plan that has been floated for years but has seen slow progress as of late. A road and railway network running from southeastern Turkey through Iraq all the way to Basra on the Gulf. Although languishing for years in the planning phase, Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan gave the project a new jolt, referencing it during a press conference last week with Iraq's Prime Minister Mohammed Shia al-Sudani. We have assigned our ministers who will carry out the work to realize the development road project extending from Basra to Turkey. I believe that we will transform this project into the new Silk Road of our region. Dubbed the Development Road Project, the railway and road network will begin at Ohaköy on the Turkish Iraqi border and head south. It will pass all of Iraq's major cities, including Mosul, its capital Baghdad, before finally arriving in Basra and the Alpha port on the Gulf. Iraq's Prime Minister said he had constructive talks with President Erdogan, especially when it came to the economy. The two countries saw a record trade year in 2022, hitting $24 billion. President Erdogan also said that Turkey would be releasing more water from the Tigris River to help alleviate water shortages in Iraq, which lies downstream. And to further discuss the Development Road Project, joining me now from Washington, D.C. is Ivan Eland. He is a senior fellow at the Independent Institute. And Ahmed Kesar from Ankara he is an associate professor at Hassan Kalyonji University. Gentlemen, welcome to Straight Talk. It's good to have you on the program. So, Ahmed, Turkey and Iraq have recently agreed to establish a land and railroad transportation corridor from Basra to the uh, Turkish border. What's the significance of this project? Uh, Aisha, actually, uh, we are experiencing very significant events uh, in all over the region uh, nowadays. Uh, the agreement between Saudi Arabia and Iran and finishing uh, all those uh, conflicting uh, results. And then uh, this project, uh, which can be defined as a new Silk Road from Basra Gulf region to Europe, which, is, which has a potential uh, to connect uh, the fossil resources in the region with the needy countries in Europe. Uh, so we can say that uh, second uh, support, which uh, uh, already working pipeline from uh, Jehan uh, to, to, to the region uh, mm -hmm. for the uh, oil uh, transformation, transportation. But now uh, we are talking about the new railroad, which will have the potential to carry out not only the fossil, but other goods and materials as well. Mm -hmm. So uh, the countries will be more uh, interactive uh, within this perspective in the future, and this may have a potential to solve the problems easier in the future, I think. So, Ivan, uh, what could you tell us about the timing of this project, which has been in the planning phase uh, for years? Why now? Well, I think, you know, the turmoil in the world, uh, in Ukraine and others, I, and I think also, you know, sheer, sheer economic uh, uh, benefits for for both sides and for uh, for everybody if it goes to Europe so I think uh, you know it does in the political and the, in the military sense it, it can help but I think uh, basically uh, trade and commerce it's no guarantee that wars aren't going to start but it certainly helps countries uh, have a peace lobby in both in both countries if, if two countries are have a have security issues. And I think Iraq and, and uh, Turkey still have uh, security issues. But, but I think, you know, it's, the commerce is good. And I think this is a good, very good development if it happens. If it happens. I'm going to ask you this later. But Ivan, could this also be construed as part of Turkey and some Middle Eastern countries' efforts to normalize their ties with one another uh, with the U.S.'s partial withdrawal and China's rising influence in the region? Well, I think that's that's probably too. You see that with Saudi Arabia and Iran, and also the Israelis, uh, up until their own turmoil, have been, have been trying to uh, normalize with the Arab countries. So I think that that it's exactly uh, correct uh, that that you know the United States has been a long has been a long time been saying it's going to pivot to Asia, and I think other countries. And I think this is a good thing because I think Israel, or excuse me, the United States has too much military involvement in the. In the in the Middle East, then uh, not enough trade and investment and that sort of thing. And so I think uh, you know this is this is a good development for other countries to uh, take over and not only do things for their 
uh, economic benefit, but their security benefit as well without the U.S. So, Ahmed, how would this project add to the interconnectivity uh, of the region? I mean, how crucial is it for some Turkish industries to have a direct uh, rail link uh, close to the Gulf? Uh, when we look at the export and import materials and the relations between the countries, for example, we uh, import, uh, as Turkey uh, imports uh, from Iraq usually the energy resources. Uh, on the other hand, uh, Tur Turkey exports uh, all food materials, uh, other productions uh, from the industrial uh, materials and uh, every kind of thing, uh, from vehicles, uh, whatever you imagine. Because uh, in Iraqi, uh, except for uh, energy type industry, uh, they need almost everything. And as everything is being important from all over the world, from European countries as well. So this is connecting the two countries and also via Turkey, European countries will be connected to Iraq as well. Because uh, European countries after, as Ivan already mentioned, the Russian-Ukrainian war, uh, they are already in the need of uh, looking for new materials or resources for uh, natural gas and other type of uh, needs. Mm -hmm. So this might be a, a good connection and good relations uh, may have a positive impact uh, on all over the region as well. Uh, but of course, uh, China's new position, uh, the increasing potential and effect should be uh, uh, spoken uh, di differently within uh, parentheses. So, Ivan, uh, when materials, could this uh, corridor project become a part of China's trillion dollar Belt and Road Initiative that also looks to create, recreate the Silk Road? Well, I think it, it can. And I think the United States might be threatened by that, but I'm not sure I've ever been threatened by the or the, the United States should be threatened by this project because uh, some of the stuff they're making is not working and they're indebting uh, third world countries and developing world. But, uh, you know, some projects are worthwhile. So, yes, it could also, you know, be a connection in that, I think, and probably uh, maybe with Chinese uh, money at some point or effort. So, Ahmed, how much of a strategic importance does Iraq have uh, for the Belt and Road Initiative also for China? Uh, normally, uh, we can say that uh, for each country, they have their own perspectives. Uh, for Iraq, Turkey and China, uh, this Belt and uh, Silk Initiative uh, may have some positive impacts. But, uh, for example, United States uh, does not stand at the same place well, because for U.S., what is significant is uh, keeping all the seaways uh, and gates open and uh, creating new alternatives for these uh, un uh, sea gates uh, under the control of U.S. is not uh, something which U.S. Uh, preferred uh, to come uh, to real. Mm -hmm. So that's why they might be against construction of these new silk roads and other things connecting China to the West. Uh, that's why, for example, the situation which is deteriorated in Afghanistan is insistingly created by United States. Uh, it, they did not just withdraw uh, in this condition. They yes. knew what will happen afterwards. So we just know that China has invested billions of dollars in Iraq for this uh, Belt and Road Initiative. But Ivan, what kind of challenges uh, you see before this project? I mean, are there any security concerns? For example, how would Iraqi officials ensure the continuity of this project as well as the security uh, of the workers moving forward? Well, of course, that's an issue. And we, uh, Iraq has had loads of security issues that have been caused by themselves and also by the United States invasion over time. And so a lot of this, uh, I think Iraq is improving slowly over time uh, through no help uh, from the U.S. invasion. But I think uh, things are improving there. And I think this is a good project because it, but it, because it, uh, it will bring jobs and, uh, you know, uh, like I said, maybe uh, improve relations with Turkey and other uh, other countries. So uh, it's a great it's a good idea. And yes, the United States may not be all that uh, enthusiastic about it because of the Chinese angle. And everything now in the United States seems to be directed towards, uh, you know, containing China. Mm -hmm. uh, and that, I think that's bad for the U.S. policy. I think we need to take it uh, more locally 
uh, with our policies and uh, and look at uh, some of the things that the Chinese are actually doing to help out. And uh, so it's in their mutual interest to do that. So, I mean, besides uh, trade ties, I mean, what other areas could the two countries cooperate? I mean, what are the shared interests of Baghdad and Ankara uh, when it comes to fighting terrorism? Uh, of course, security is at the foreground because uh, it, it's also related with the project, actually, because this project line is not just passing through the uh, or uh, federal government of Iraq does not have overall control in all the regions. Uh, so it is passing through the Nordic uh, Kurdish regional uh, management uh, also. So if uh, the two countries can create a win-win solution for every actor in the region, uh, so including uh, the Nordish, uh, Nordic uh, Kurdish regional management as well, if they will win uh, something from this project, then the security can be established. Otherwise, uh, by using some terrorist organizations or other actors in the region, the security of the project might be uh, put in danger. All right, gentlemen, unfortunately, we'll have to leave it here. Thank you very much for joining me on Straight Talk.